Last year, I started a wildlife garden project. I wanted to turn my back garden into a haven for wildlife. I could do things like letting the grass grow wild, encourage wildflowers to grow. This in turn will encourage the pollinators such as bees, hoverflies and butterflies to visit the flowers. This in turn will encourage the birds and mammals that eat them to visit my garden. And I can do a small part into trying to combat the biodiversity crisis that we face in this country and all over the world. Uh, it's going to be a very small part, but it's something and it's what I can do. Uh, so this is now the second year of the project, so I thought today I would show you a little bit about what I've done so far this year and show you some of the results that we've got uh, in the garden. And it's gonna be quite a nice one, I think. So thank you very much for joining me today. So this is where we start in early summer 2020. I've done a little bit of work with the grass. You may be able to see that I've cut the grass short but left three areas to grow longer. These areas I'll leave to grow wild and see what turns up. I've also cleared a couple of areas by the fence where some brambles were growing. I've got loads of bramble on the other side of my garden so I didn't need any more there. So as well as leaving areas of the lawn to grow naturally, I'm also going to give it a bit of a helping hand by planting some native wildflower seeds in the lawn. I've got my tools, seeds and peat-free compost ready. I have these seed mixes from a company called Seedball. I'm not sponsored, although if anybody from Seedball is watching, I'd totally be okay with that, just saying. They do these wonderful mixes of seeds with various pollinators in mind. I have here a butterfly mix, a bee mix and a wildflower lawn mix, as well as a meadow mix. It's the wildflower lawn mix I'll be starting with. These seeds are from flowers that would naturally grow in grassy areas or grazed fields in the UK. The balls themselves are made from a mix of peat-free compost and clay. The compost provides nutrition to the seeds and the clay protects the seeds from predators. There's also chilli powder in them to stop slugs and snails from eating the young shoots. This mix will contain seeds for flowers like buttercup, dandelion, white and red clover, birdsfoot trefoil and common knapweed, with around 30 seeds in each ball. The balls do need contact with the soil however, so to plant them in an established lawn I need to remove a small patch of grass. After I've done this I add a small amount of peat-free compost and place in a single seed ball. As I started doing this and digging out multiple patches, my original intention was to dig regular holes in 10 lines by 10 rows, thereby digging out 100 holes for the 100 seeds in the packet. But I quickly realised that in order to do this, I ended up digging out the same kind of plants that I was about to plant seeds for. This would be a stupid thing to do, so I changed tack and dug out irregular holes in patches of the garden that were pure grass or moss. I ended up with much less holes than I planned, but hopefully it will look more natural anyway. I also planted some of the seed balls in the patches of bare soil from where I cleared out the brambles. In these patches I used a butterfly mix of seeds. These seeds have a mix of purple, pink and blue flowers designed to attract butterflies. These seed balls need to be watered well to break down the clay. And now, I guess we wait. OK, let's skip ahead a few weeks and the grass has gotten longer. It's time to get the lawnmower out and re-establish the areas of short grass which will really make the longer areas stand out. My neighbours must think I'm crazy filming myself mowing the lawn. I can just imagine the conversation. Our weird neighbours out in the garden again. Well, what's he doing now? He's filming himself, cutting the grass. Yeah, that sounds about right.
also important to keep the bird feeder and bird bath clean and topped up. There's been a long spell of hot, dry weather and the birds need water. But bird feeders and baths can be centres of disease spread, so I'm giving mine a scrub and disinfecting it. Wait for it to dry, fill it up with fresh water and then top up the food. Perfect. Checking in on the seed balls we can see that some have begun to sprout. I've no idea at this stage what's growing but hopefully we'll be able to tell in a few weeks. One thing I'm very excited to see growing is the yellow rattle that I planted in the autumn last year. I wasn't sure it was going to grow but it's everywhere. Yellow rattle is a pretty yellow flower that's semi-parasitic on grass. The roots of the yellow rattle take water and nutrients from grass growing nearby, suppressing their growth. This thins out the grass and allows other plants more space to grow. These are an essential plant to have in a wildflower meadow area. Another visitor to the garden is this common frog. There's been at least one, sometimes two frogs in my little mini pond every day for a couple of weeks. I'm hoping this might mean frog spawn next year, but we'll have to wait and see. OK, moving on several more weeks, let's check on the progress. This is year two of my wildlife garden project and it's much closer to how I want it than it was last year, but there's still a long way to go. Making a wildlife garden can take years and is a lot of work, but when you start to see the flowers bloom and the insect life buzzing around, it's definitely worth it. Let me show you some of the highlights. This is a female red-tailed bumblebee enjoying the pretty purple flowers of a thistle. Just to give you an idea of the scale, this thistle plant is almost as tall as I am. The areas of long grass are now filled with bright yellow flowers. I'm not entirely sure what they are as there are many, many species of flower that look similar, but my best guess is common cat's ear or maybe common hawkweed. Here's some more, mixed in with some oxeye daisies. I'm not the only one enjoying these flowers, this male thick-legged flower beetle is too. Here are some more oxeye daisies surrounding my apple tree I planted last year. And behind the apple tree, you can see some red valerian. There are numerous foxglove flowers all over the garden. Absolutely beautiful, if highly toxic, plants. But for the second year running, I have some bee orchids growing right on the boundary between the long and short grass. I love this flower. Hopefully they'll become a regular feature in the garden. I really hope they spread and I'll see even more next year. Another pretty flower growing amongst the grass is this dotted loosestrife. It's fairly small now, but it can grow up to one metre tall, but it can take up to five years to reach this height. This area of the garden is where I planted lots of wildflower seeds last year. The results are a bit mixed, I'm not entirely happy with how it looks and I feel it could be better and I may attempt to do something different with it but uh, I'm not sure yet. There are however some very nice plants growing here including creeping buttercup, red campion, more foxgloves yarrow and purple toad flags. There's a constant battle with the ground elder which I've left to grow on the other side of the path. You may have seen a video a few weeks ago where I cooked and ate some of this plant. I wouldn't eat it now while it's flowering, as apparently it has a bad taste and a laxative effect. Not good. This part of the garden I still need to figure out what to do with. 
it's shady and the ground eld currently dominates everything, so this will be a task for much later in the year, or maybe early next. Also threatening to get out of control is this bindweed. Again, I'm continually pulling it up, but it grows back very quickly. It does have this amazing bell-shaped flower, which is very popular with the bees, so I don't mind having some growing, I just don't want it choking the other plants. Checking the area where I planted the seed balls earlier in the video, there's been a lot of growth. The tall plants at the back are sunflowers I planted, and I'm looking forward to seeing them bloom. But around here there's a lot of different plants growing. Unfortunately I don't really know if any of it came from the seed balls or just grew on its own, but there are some interesting looking plants though. There are European field pansies. I've seen these grow in other parts of the garden, so these didn't come from the seed balls and are a naturally occurring flower, which I don't mind at all. They're very pretty and they are native, so they are most welcome. We also have this shepherd's purse, another naturally occurring flower named after the triangular shaped seed pods. After taking a closer look, I don't think any of these plants come from the seed balls, which usually take quite some time to flower, and I might not see much results until next year. Lastly, a quick look at the nettle patch. Most people would pull these up as soon as possible, but nettles play host to such a diverse range of life. Today I want to draw your attention to the abundance of ladybirds in all stages of life, from larvae, Pupa, to adult, Why are there so many ladybirds here? That's because a major food source for them are these aphids, which can be found in huge numbers all over the nettles. Well, thank you for joining me for a look around my garden. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know in the comments section what you've got growing in your garden. What kind of flowers and insects do you see there? I'm really interested to find out what other people have. So if you enjoyed the video, please do like it and subscribe to the channel for more content like this one. So once again, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. And that in turn will encourage the birds and mammals that will eat them. And I could have some kind of biodiversity crisis. What is going on? <laughs> so much shouting. <sighs> the uh, downside of uh, having a wildlife garden project is you also have neighbours who uh, don't realise you're filming stuff. <clears throat> okay. <laughs>